Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today a really cool tutorial. We will see how to play with VDB settings to create really interesting shapes like rocks, architecture design, organic life, a lot of possibilities. We will also see how to export this creation and apply texture based on curvature and dot map to create really beautiful and interesting final render. You can of course have access to all the scene files for this render on my Patreon. Okay, it's time to create. Let's go. Okay, so first I'm going to create a sphere and set the segment to 100. I create now a type of setup, open editor. I go to the VDB tab and I create a burst VDB. We can see here the voxel size. I will now create an object to SDF, pick my sphere and I deselect the original sphere. We can go to the browse VDB and decrease the voxel size to have a better VDB mesh, but we will stay to 0.7 for the moment. I reactivate my sphere and I will duplicate these spheres. One more above. I can go back now to my type flow, pick all the sphere, and we see that we have a fusion of the three spheres. If I want, I can go to my sphere and move them to have the look I want. Maybe like this. I can add another object to SDF. We see here that we have different operation mode. I just duplicate one more time a sphere, change the operation to subtract, pick my last sphere. And as you can see, we can create beautiful boolean mesh just with playing with the operation mode. I can decrease again my voxel size. I change now the mode to intersect if I just want the intersection between the two operators. Okay, so I'm going back a little bit and I move my sphere, maybe here, like this. And now we will see what the VDB filter does. So VDB filter. You can play on different modes like density, velocity, UVW, but for us it's filter SDF. And you see that the filter affects the mesh. I can set my timing to continuous. You see here the difference with or without the filter. And if I go forward in my timeline, you can see how this filter smooths the mesh. You have of course different filters to play with. We can try Maxify that produce a result a bit different. We can try to dilatation, we we'll dilate the mesh. Erosion is just the total opposite of dilatation. Maybe this look is really cool and I want to stop my erosion to the frame rate. So I go to my timing, select VDB age and set the last frame to one. No, the filter will never exceed the frame 1. I can add another VDB filter with min to smooth the mesh. Timing continues. Increase the iteration. Go back to the frame 1. We see here the difference. And I do the same thing for the VDB age. Okay, so we saw here quickly how to play with the filter to modify the look of your VDB mesh. Filters are really great to improve the final look of your simulation. Okay, so now I will show you how to completely modify your VDB to create beautiful growth structure or animation. I just select the frame 0 in VDB edge for my mesh to have a bit more volume for the simulation. And I'm going to add a VDB modify. Okay, what we have here. We can play on the velocity, density, or UVW. In the vector operation, we have different action modes like add, multiply, set, and more. In input vector, we can affect the mesh with force, noise 3D, SDF normals, curl, and more too. And in the input and output, we can play with the multiplier to control the wall settings. Okay, so we affect here the velocity. The mode is to set, and the input is to SDF normal. So basically the VDB mesh will just grow like dilatation. I set the timing to continuous and nothing happened. Okay, why? Just because we need a VDB solver. You can see here, VDB solver affect volume with velocity. So I add my VDB solver 
and we can see the growth of our VDB mesh. We can go in the input and decrease the multiplier, and now the growth is a bit slower. We can play on other settings like maybe surface text map that allow us to modify the volume with the map. So I just select my sphere one, and I will just create a material with a noise map. I just add to my sphere a UVW map with spherical mapping to perfectly fit the UVW of the sphere. And I play with the noise setting and with the high and low value to have a beautiful black and white noise separation. Okay, perfect. I can now go back to type flow, pick my sphere. I just reactivate type flow and link the map to the text map of my operator. And we see if I go forward in my timeline, how the map affects the volume. You can of course change the size of your nose to have different look. If I decrease my voxel size, I can see better how the noise affects the volume. You can go to the VDB server and change the spatial scheme. Here we see that the second BIOS really changed the look of the simulation. Really interesting like this. If you want, you can add a relax modifier to smooth your final mesh. Increase the iteration. Decrease the voxel size. A lot of possibilities. Okay, so basically it was just to show you that you can affect the volume with the texture too. But it's not what we will use today, so I'm going back to SDF normal under VDB modify. And same for the solver. Okay, so we just have our classic growth. I'm going to clone the VDB modify. Set my vector to add and change the input to noise 3D. So we have a growth with the first modify and the second apply noise 3D in addition to the first one. I can change the noise to curl and play with the scale, frequency, and strength to create the first interesting look. I duplicate this new modify operator. I can set the noise to turbulence this time. And I change the mode to multiply. So basically, the multiply will not add a force in addition to the other, but will just multiply with the setting you choose. Here, turbulence noise. You can play as always with the noise setting to start creating the look you want. I can now decrease my voxel size to have a better simulation. And yeah, it starts to create a really cool growth simulation. I really like the curl we see here. Really good. Now I will just decrease the setting to show you another way to modify the volume. So I just add another modify. Timing to continuous. Operation to multiply again. And input scalar to curvature. Curvature and Laplacian create a really cool deformation to your volume. Okay, so we have interesting result here, but uh, we've totally lost the shape that we've created. So to fix that, we can go to the Modify Input Scalar tab. Select Retarget, and we'll play to the From and To values. If I set a value of minus 5 for From, we totally lost the curvature effect. I will now decrease the value in the 2 to minus 3. With minus 4, we see again more the curvature. Maybe with 2, almost no curvature. Maybe minus 3.5 can be a good in between. You can also play with the exponent here if you want. If you increase the exponent, don't forget to really increase the multiplier. Here 25. Yeah, beautiful result. 
but I will decrease them, maybe 2 for the exponent and 5 for the multiplier. I cannot decrease my voxel size to have a more defined simulation and increase the narrow band, but keep in mind that up this value will increase your time simulation. Yeah, it's really good. I have a little volume separated from the entire shape, but if I want, I could easily fix that with a filter. Okay, so if I recap, I have a first growth, a curl noise in addition, after another noise in multiply, and a curvature in multiply to complexify the volume. Okay, so once we have a good simulation, it's time to be focused on the texture. I just create a V-Ray cam to activate a V-Ray engine, and I will create a simply V-Ray material. Go to Diffuse, V-Ray bitmap, and the texture you want. So if I apply this texture to my tight flow, you can see that it doesn't work because my VDB simulation don't have UVW data. So to fix that, I will go back to tight flow. I create a VDB modify and I simply choose UVW in the modify grid. And now we see that all texture is correctly applied to the volume. You can of course go forward and see how the texture react to the deformation. In the timing settings, stay on uneven entry if you want that your texture grows with your volume. If you want that your texture don't grow and just duplicate with the displacement, you can change the mode to continuous. It's really up to you to see what look you want to create. Okay, now I will show you a really cool way to texture your volume based on dot map and curvature. So I will just deactivate my last VDB modify because I don't need it. And I will just export my mesh because I don't need to do change on my tight flow setup. So export selected, alumbic file, and I save my mesh. You can select the same options as me, you don't really need all this data for your export. I just select my range, frame 5 to 5, so one frame, and export. Okay, I can now close all and I'm going to import my alumbic file. So import. And I can rotate the mesh to have the angle I want for my render. I just created a simple lighting with an HDRI and now we'll see how to texture the mesh. I create now one simply very material and I'm going to apply this material to my type of shape. Okay. I duplicate this material and I'm going to change the color. Maybe red. If I apply, we can see the red. And now I'm going to create a very blend material. Link the first to the base and the second to the cut one. I can now apply this texture to my mesh and we see that we have a mix of these two colors. I will now create a very dirt and a very curvature. If I link my very dirt to the blend one, we can see that the map affect all the colors are distributed. You can play with the distribution, fall off and radius value to modify the distribution of the color to have a smooth or sharp separation. A really cool thing to do is to play with the curvature. You can go to the max output color and increase the value. We really see here the change. Play with the sample spread, play with the scale. You can decrease it, modify these three values to really create the look you want for the texture of your mesh. And once you're satisfied with the final look, you can apply your final material. Here may be a ceramic. And for the red, maybe a chrome. Not bad, but uh, let's try with the gold. And yeah, it's really beautiful like this. This is basically how to texture your VDB mesh based on dirt and curvature data. I will show you one last thing. Here a little project I created with a simple torus shape modify with a noise. Here are the textures that I created for this project. And if I launch the render, you can see the smooth look of the shape. That's really cool, but I wanted to create a more detailed rock look for 
for this folder. So what you can do is to go to the displacement and link a noise map with a low scale and high level. And if I run again my render, you can see that the displacement really affects the final look. It's a really cool way to mix VDB and displacement. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot of things and that VDB is more understandable for you. Don't forget the thumb up and the subscribe if you like my work. You can also support me on Patreon and follow me on Instagram if you want. See you soon for next tutorial guys. Bye.